So good morning everyone, my name is Benjamin Duroy, I'm a geologist working at ELIS. So today I'm gonna talk about the spectral decomposition and the color blending. So here are the outlines that I'm going to follow. So the first thing that we're going to talk about are the attributes in real time. So I'm going to show you how we can get these. So you will see that it's very interactive to play with, uh, with the frequency because when we change the parameters on the fly, Palo Scan is going to update the display of the volume. So this is really handy in order to see the effects of the parameter that you're changing. Then I'm going to show you how do we do the frequency analysis in Palo Scan. So how do we configure the right frequency filtering when we are using the uh, frequency decomposition tool, so based on the amplitude spectrum. And then I'm going to show you how do we use the parameter how do we change the parameters during the spectral decomposition so based on the analysis of the amplitude spectrum. Of course the aim of the frequency decomposition or the spectral decomposition will be to generate three volumes based on three different frequencies and then the aim of this will be to color blend the three volumes in order to better track all the geological targets. So here is the workflow that we are going to follow. So we first need to generate the attributes. So based on the frequency decomposition or the spectral decomposition. So we generate three volumes based on three different frequencies. Then we map the three frequencies into the color blending. So we can here have a look either at the time slice of the volume or at the horizon slice if we have an horizon stack. And then this allows us to better track the geological features that we have in the volume in order to have a nice prospect detection. So let's go into PaleoScan to have a look at it. So this is the seismic that I'm going to play with during this webinar. So this is the Xmouse uh, seismic so located offshore uh, Western Australia. So if I open my seismic, I click within this viewer, if I have a look at the properties, you can see that here in the attributes, we have access to a list of attributes and all those attributes are some real-time attributes. So this means that those attributes can be computed on the fly. So for instance, if I want to have access to the RMS, I just need to click on the RMS, change the parameter and PaloScan is going to update the display regarding this parameter here. So here, let's talk about the frequency filtering. So for the frequency filtering, you can say that we have access to the low pass, high pass and band pass attributes. So if we have a look at the low pass, in the low pass uh, frequency filtering tool, we have access to different filter types such as Butterworth, Han, Hamming, Bartlett or Cosin. And of course, for every single filter type, we have access to specific parameters. So for this demo here, let's play with the bandpass. So here again for the bandpass we have access to different filter types, so Butterworth, Han, Hamming, Bartlett, Cosin, and then we have access to some um, to some um, wavelets, so Ricker or Omsby. So here the easiest one is the Ricker because we just have to play with the central frequency instead of playing with a lot of parameters. So for the demo it's going to be quite, quite easy and quite quick. So for instance if I play with the central frequency, you can see that if I reduce it, Palo Scan is going to update the display of the volume. So here, for instance, for the first frequency, for the low frequency that I'm going to extract, let's play with a frequency of 9 Hz. So this is going to be my first volume. Then the idea here is to generate three volumes, so I still need to open two other volumes. So I'm going to tile vertically the windows. So then for this volume, here let's play with the medium frequency, so I'm going to use the bandpass again, the recur, like I did for the previous one, and here for the central frequency, let's play for instance with a central frequency of 11 or let's say 13 Hz, and for this one I'm going to extract the high frequency, so let's play with the bandpass again, recur here, and then a central frequency which is a bit higher, so let's play with 21 Hz for instance. So here you can see that we have three different volumes based on three different frequencies. So once we have the three frequencies, 
the ID will be to generate those volumes. So we don't need to generate physically the volumes to have access to the inline and the cross line um, color blending. So for instance, I just can select this volume, click on the diskette here. So it's called band pass low, because this is the low frequency. So this one here is going to be the medium frequency or middle frequency. And this one here is going to be the high frequency. Very high, like this. So you can set Palio Scan just generated the three volumes here on the fly. So once I have the three volumes on the fly like this, I need to go on extension, activate this light sense here called advanced interpretation, and then this grid me access to the color blending. So once I am on the color blending, I just need to click on the volume color blending. So this way I will be able to blend the three volumes I just generated. So they are here. So for the red channel, I'm going to use the low frequency. For the green channel, I'm going to use the medium frequency. And for the blue channel, I'm going to use the high frequency. Then here, I can zoom in. And to set up the color, actually, we can play with the color bar like this. So if I just sharp the color, or if I want to make it more redder or darker, I can just play, I can just change with um, I can just change here this box here. So I can do it for the three channels but sometimes it may be quite tricky to find the best parameters so actually in, instead of playing with the three channels here the idea would be to click on init all so this way palo scan is going to look for the best contrast for the entire volume for the color blending and then here i can then just navigate to the volumes so here i'm uh, having a look at the inline direction but if i want i can have a look in the cross line direction and it's going to be the same thing. I can navigate through it and change the color. So this was the first way of doing the frequency filtering. Uh, so we can use some real-time attributes, like here. The issue with this one is that this is not really accurate, because actually we don't use the amplitude spectrum. So I'm going to close all the windows, and I'm going to show you a second way of doing the frequency filtering. But this time, instead of using the real-time attributes, I'm going to use this tool here, the frequency decomposition module. So here, for this module, we need to use the seismic. And Palo Scan is going to show me, in the black line here, the amplitude spectrum of this current line. This means that if, if I change the line, you can see that Palo Scan is going to update the amplitude spectrum. Also, the amplitude spectrum is going to be adjusted regarding this area of interest here. This means that if I know that we have some channels around here, for instance, I can just reduce my area of interest, and Palo Scan is going to adjust the amplitude spectrum. So once I have my amplitude spectrum, the idea will be to generate three filters based on three different frequencies. So for the first filter, actually here, as a filter type, we have access to the Han and Hamming. So those ones are some fast for a transform. And those ones here, Arms B, Butterworth, and Ricker, are based on the wavelet convolution. So for the demo, I'm going to use the fast wave transform, the high filter. So here for the fast filter, I'm going to have access to the low cut, the low pass, the high pass, and the high cut parameters. So to change the parameters, I can either use the sliders, like this, or I can just roll the mouse in this typing box here. So this way, I can see the, the effects of the filtering. So here, for instance, for the first filter, let's play with a filter like this. OK. So once I've set up the first filter, I can set up the second filter, like this. So let's reduce maybe a bit this area, like this. And so then, once I have set up the second filter, I can set up the third filter. So I'm going to include this one here to have a nice overlapping zone. For instance, like this. OK. So then here, I have my three different filters based on three different frequencies. So now the aim, again, will be to save those volumes. OK. So it's done here again almost instantan instantaneously. And then 
here again I can blend those volumes by using the color blending module so the volumes are here so I'm gonna use the low one here in the red channel the medium one here in the green channel and the high frequency for the blue channel then here again I can zoom in click on init all and file scan screen to update the color contrast so here again this is a volume okay that I just blended so I can navigate throughout this volume and I can also change the direction from inline to cross line so here again you can set because this is done in real time the issue is uh, I because it uses the traces I cannot display the time slice so if I want to display the time slice I need to physically generate the volumes so this is what I've done here so I have the same volumes except that those ones have been previously generated so I'm gonna do the same thing click on this icon here but instead of displaying the real-time attributes I'm gonna display the volumes that I have physically generated so it took me a couple of minutes to generate those and then here I have access to the time slice so I can again click on init all so by scanning to look for the best color contrast and then I can just navigate throughout my time slice so this way I'm gonna track some geological features so here you can see that we can see we can follow a channel here so the issue with the time slice here is that instead of following the event uh, we are going to cross the event so this is why it's not really um, easy to better track an event because we just look at a specific time slice so I'm gonna reduce this window here so actually now I'm going to show you the last way of doing the filtering so instead of using the frequency decomposition tool we're going to use the spectral decomposition so I click on this icon so this interface pops up so here again I need to use my seismic and so here instead of displaying the amplitude spectrum I'm going to display the spectrogram of my seismic so first of all I'm gonna use the cross navigation to locate this viewer here around this area because I have spotted this channel in here and so then in here you can see that I have access to this spectrogram so this spectrogram here basically represents the signature of this channel at this specific location so you can say if I change the location you can set the spectrogram is updated so to do the spectral decomposition actually we have access to two methods so the first method that you can use is the short term for a transform so this method actually uh, in this method the trace is going to be convolved uh, with, um, with a windowed scene function or setting at a given frequency so the parameters that we have to set up is the window size and this uh, window length has to be chosen for a required time accuracy so for instance if I change this window size you can set now my frequency is going to be more accurate so here for instance let me play with this window size here at 60 milliseconds so this gives us this frequency signature here for this channel the second method that you can use is the continuous wavelet transform so with this continuous wavelet transform actually the trace is going to be convolved with the wavelet so this could be a morelet or a weaker and this is going to be convolved with a peak frequency corresponding to the required frequency and of course with this method the um, time precision can automatically be adjusted according to the frequency that we're going to use so here for this demo we're going to use the short time for a transform with a window length at 15 pixels or 60 milliseconds so once we have this signature here the idea will be to pick three frequencies so I'm gonna use this one for the low one this one for the middle one and this one for the high one so of course even if I just choose those chosen if I have chosen those frequencies I can still change those okay so I can display this one here with a 16 Hertz 
for instance, this one here, let's say at 28 Hz, and this one here at 41 Hz. So here again, once I have chosen my remarkable frequencies, I can click on save. So Polar Scan is going to instantaneously save the horizons, the, the volumes, sorry, and then I have my three volumes in here. But this time, instead of looking at a time slice, the idea would be to map those volumes on the resin stack. So this way, I'm going to have three resin stacks based on three different frequencies. And in here, so instead of doing the color blending using the time slice, like I just said, I'm going to use the resin stack color blending like this and in here I'm going to use the low frequency here the high fre the middle the medium frequency here and the high frequency in here so here again in instead of changing the color channel per channel I'm going to use the in its all icons so this way polar scan is going to look for the best color contrast and then I just need to pan through the resin stack in order to better track all the events. So you can see that here, when we compare this resin stack here with this uh, time slice here, you can because the resin stack are, um, let's say, um, duly consistent regarding the events, it's much easier to follow the entire event. So of course, here I am looking at it in a 2D view, but if I want, I can also display it in a 3D viewer, like this. So here again, if I want, I can just move down or up like this I can also play with the lighting if I want to better analyze to better view the channels so for instance like this and of course once we have this channel or this one the next step may be to extract it as a geo body so this is what we have done here. So we have extracted this channel as a as a geobody. And of course, once we have this channel, we can do some we can compute some volumetrics or we can generate some ISO cores and so on. So just to um conclude, you can see that with Polar Scan we have different ways of doing the uh, frequency filtering. So we can either use some real-time attributes. So this is quite easy because you can see the effect on the fly. If you want to be more accurate, you can use the frequency decomposition tool. So this way, Palo Scan is going to compute the amplitude spectra of the of the volumes. Then you just need to extract three key frequencies. Otherwise, you can also use our spectral decomposition tool uh, in order to focus, to really focus on the frequency that you want to extract. Of course, once you have the three volumes based on the three frequencies you can then map the volumes on the resin stack so it's gonna give us a better view of the geocal features and this will improve the um, the, um, the prospects uh, targeting of the geocal features so thank you for your attention if you have any questions or any comments uh, feel free to send us, send us uh, an email uh, and we'll, we will be pleased to, to answer you Thank you very much again.